In this video, we're going to look at how to troubleshoot what would present as motor axis faults for all of your X, Y, and Z axes on an MX machine, or what would show up as lack of motion on all of your axes on an M machine. Because the M's do not have encoders on the motors, you wouldn't get a fault, but you would still see that lack of motion. This video is specific to the 770N1100M and MX machines. Troubleshooting steps for the PCNC 440, 24R, and PCNC 770N1100 will differ. Troubleshooting for this issue will require operating in the electrical cabinet of your machine. Of course, anytime working with electricity, caution is required. If you're not comfortable working in the electrical cabinet, we would recommend you reach out to a local electrician or machine tool service company. So as an overview of our power system to our axis motors, first we're going to have our power coming in our main disconnect switch here, then we're going through our CB1 and CB2 breakers, and then from there we go up to our K1 contactor, then to our EMI filter, a pair of fuses here, our transformer, DC bus board, and then on M machines, our four stepper drivers, and on M axis to our three clear path motors, and then our fourth axis driver if that's installed. Based on the fault being our lack of motion on M machines and our three axis motor faults on MXs, we know that our CB1 and CB2 breakers are fine and our K1 contactor is not the issue. If they were, we would be seeing different faults. So our number one suspect is going to be the F1 and F2 fuses hiding back here. Uh, it's F1 and F2 on 1100 machines. On 770s, those, that is just gonna be an F1 fuse. If we have a red LED on in the center of our holder, that is a sure sign that the fuse is blown and needs to be replaced. However, even if you don't see that red LED, you should still remove the fuses and check their resistance on a bench. In order to remove them from this style of holder, you pull the top lever down in order to drop it for removal. And then the fuse itself here in the middle can be pushed out to the right side for you to measure the resistance. On 2019 and later machines that are using those one quarter by one and a quarter inch fuses, there are two spares taped in a bag to the bottom of the electrical cabinet that can be used. Once we checked our F1 and F2 fuses and we know that they're good, the next thing that we're going to look at is our DC bus board here. On the 1100s, there is a green LED in the bottom left corner that tells us that the DC bus board is receiving power. On the 770s, the DC bus board is mounted 180 degrees from the 1100 mounting, so that green LED would be in the top right corner. So, very first thing we're gonna look at is the F8 fuse, that is the main fuse for the DC bus board. On the 1100s, that's gonna be in the top right corner. Uh, again, since the 770 is flipped 180 degrees, that will be the bottom left corner for the F8 fuse. Once we've checked our F8 fuse and we know that one is good, what we're going to check next is our individual axis fuses. Those are F1 through F4 in order for X, Y, Z, and A. If we verify that our individual axis fuses are okay, what we're gonna look at next are our individual axis drivers and clear path motors. This is a fourth axis driver that we're looking at, which will be the same between the M and MX machines. What you see on this driver is a six pin green Degson connector. On the M machines, the X, Y, and Z drivers will have a five pin connector. But in either case, what we're going to look at is the bottom two pins here. You can see that on the drive, they are labeled AC, but we are supplying them with DC power from our DC bus board. What we're gonna do is measure with a multimeter across those two pins to verify that we have voltage coming into the driver. If we don't see that DC power across those two connections, then we have to go back to either our DC bus board or our F1 and F2 fuses and check them again. On the clear path motors, what we're going to be looking at is this white cap in the bottom right corner. Depending on which motor we're looking at, the orientation of that cap will differ. Underneath that cap is an LED, and the number of times that LED blinks and its color indicate the source of the fault that can be cross-referenced against the Technic manual. If we don't see any light on that LED, then we know that we are not getting power to that motor. And again, we will go back to our DC bus board and F1 and F2 fuses. If you're not able to locate the source of the fault or you need any other assistance, please reach out to Tormach Technical Support.